Hello, I am Dr. Benjamin Chang, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about when to refer a patient with CLI. Peripheral vascular disease of the lower extremities is virtually epidemic in the older age groups of this country. While many of these patients have only minor degrees of occlusive disease with no symptoms, many individuals will progress to more severe degrees of disease with the development of claudication, or worse, critical ischemia with ulcers, breast pain, or gangrene. The patients with the most severe symptoms are the easiest to recommend for consultation. Critical ischemia of all kinds is associated with very high rates of limb loss if nothing is done to improve the arterial circulation to the affected limb. Even if the patient is deemed to be too ill to undergo open operative repair, the advent of modern percutaneous revascularization can be offered to virtually anyone and is certainly less morbid than major leg amputation. In addition to limb loss, the excruciating pain associated with critical ischemia is by itself debilitating and often poorly controlled with narcotic analgesia. As limb salvage is more easily accomplished before the development of large ulcers or extensive gangrene, early and often urgent referral to a vascular surgeon is the most appropriate course of action in these cases. There is a spectrum of chronic limb ischemia going from rest pain through non-healing ulcer to gangrene and foot sepsis. Any patient who manifests the terminal complications of chronic limb ischemia should be evaluated by a vascular surgeon. There is a small subset of patients with diabetic neuropathy and foot ulcers who can be adequately treated by offloading or by podiatric procedures, but all of these patients should be evaluated by non-invasive testing and evaluated by a vascular surgeon in order to make sure that their lesions are not due to poor blood supply. It is mandatory that the vascular surgeon work in concert with a podiatrist, family practitioner, or referring medical practitioner in order to get good comprehensive and cohesive care of the lesion. Any patient who has a lesion that is not healed in six weeks, again, needs to be evaluated by a vascular surgeon and aggressively investigated for improving peripheral blood supply. Even more important, those patients who have had an endovascular treatment either by a cardiologist, radiologist, or vascular surgeon who have not reached the end point of healing need to be further evaluated to make sure that the maximum amount of blood flow has been established to the lower extremity. This is why it is important to be evaluated for all types of reconstructive surgery and wound care treatments before one opts for amputation. There are numerous approaches for evaluation, including non-invasive duplex ultrasound, segmental pressures with pulse volume recordings, CTA or MRA, to evaluate peripheral runoff, as well as contrast angiography, which can be a diagnostic as well as therapeutic option. Again, if the desired endpoints of maximal distal perfusion are not reached, surgery should always be considered in those patients who are suitable in order to maximize limb salvage. Patients with lesser degrees of PVD who only have claudication are a mixed bag. Patients who are clearly limited in performing their occupations due to claudication should be sent for referral. Patients who have claudication that limits their ability to perform desired, non-job related activities should be referred to see if their desire for an improved lifestyle warrants the potential risk entailed by whatever form of correction or improvement that would be anatomically appropriate. The vascular surgeon can usually give these patients the most direct information about the exact procedure or operation that is necessary, the risks to the patient, and can help the patient decide whether to leave things alone or to have a revascularization. Patients with claudication that causes neither job-related problems nor serious lifestyle limitations often benefit from a vascular surgical consultation. Formal non-invasive testing can graphically show the patient the scope of the problem and may make it easier for the patient to realize that risk factor control and medication may be necessary to prevent or slow worsening. Finally, there is a group of patients with leg pain or other problems which may or may not be related to PVD. Evaluation by the vascular surgeon and the use of pulse volume recordings and treadmill testing can help define the cause of the leg symptoms. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.